guys, it's Jade from Boho Bookworm. I am doing my January wrap up today a little bit late because I have been travelling since you last saw me besides the previous video. I left Mallorca for good, good riddance, and I also went to Ireland and now I'm in South Africa and Istanbul on a layover. Oh, sorry about the dogs. Back with my parents living here now, so there will probably be dog barking, hearted ass walking, and as uh, JD said, birds and breezes, so yes. But besides that, I hope you can deal with me until I figure out my life with this chaotic filming area. But, okay, so in January, I read six and a half books. I almost finished Something In Between by Melissa De La Cruz, but I finished it on the 1st of Feb, so I'll be including that in my February wrap-up rather than this one, because six books is still quite a lot to get through, so here we go. First book I finished was Chloe Diller by fellow booktuber Natalie Cuddington. I love this book. I gave it a four star review on Goodreads. Natalie is an absolutely wonderful booktuber. She's such a nice and genuine person too and she's hilarious. So I'll leave her link to her Goodreads book um, link down below as well as her booktube channel because you should really go and check her out. Natalie sent me a free copy of this book in exchange for an honest review, but not only did she send me the book, she sent me an entire beautiful care package of all these little goodies. I'll leave the link to my unboxing of that down below as well because that was really fun. But this was a really special book for me. I actually contacted her and said, I really think I need to read your book because it's about a girl who loses her fiancé and how she goes forward. And I lost a fiancé too, so it's... It's a very personal read for me and the very first night when I picked it up I was, I had tears in my eyes in the first page. <laughs> the other thing is that the main character is 25, which is my age, so I found a lot of the entire story and her struggles with her age really relatable for me. As Chloe is trying to get over her ex-fiance, she moves to her old town again, gets her old job back and you know, gets this little flat, and then she starts to develop these feelings for this guy called Cohen really quickly, and she feels really guilty that she's having feelings for someone so soon after her ex fiancés death. But then this guy Cohen doesn't turn out to be who she thinks he is. So, yes, uh, it just kind of creates even more chaos in her life. Another aspect of this book is that she is seeing her ex-fiancé, like his ghost, and she's trying to figure out what that means, and is she going mad, does she have a brain tumour? You know, it's, it's funny and it's humorous, it's heartbreaking, it's everything rolled into one. The only thing I have to say about this book is that it did contain a couple of typos, but it was such a good book that I was able to overlook that and still give it an honest four-star review. The book I completed was The Selection by Kira Cass. This is the first book in the Selection series, and I don't often give out five-star reviews, especially not to chiclet books. This one was awarded one of my ever-so-rare five-star reviews. And it just goes to show that that saying, don't judge a book by its cover, is so very, very true. Even the blurb on the back it is not something I would have normally picked up. It just looks and sounds like a really shitty chiclet. And I only really picked it up because it does get a lot of attention on booktube by a lot of the booktubers. And I was like, oh, okay, let me just get it and see what it's about. And apparently it was also, you know, I got a little bit sold on it because I love the TV show The Bachelor because I am a hopeless romantic at the very core. So I was like, okay, well, I do love The Bachelor, so I might like this. I'm so glad I did pick it up because I adored it, absolutely adored it. This book is not exactly a love story, it is about a prince that's on the cusp of taking over his country and he's trying to find a wife to help him rule the kingdom. The main character is part of the selection, so a bunch of women come together and they basically compete to win the prince's affections. And it's really good. The main character is wonderful. She's a super feisty, inspiring girl, which is really good for a strong female character in a book. And yeah, I, I really don't want to give too much away, but it's so brilliant. As you can tell, I have 
all of the other books. So I am looking forward to getting to it. It's a really quick, easy read. I think I read it in like a day and a half or something. There was also a hint of dystopian in this book, which is something I would usually shy away from because it's not really my cup of tea. I'm not really into dystopians or sci-fis too much yet, although this year I am trying to read more diversely. But that said, the, the dystopian world was so subtly done that it was really enjoyable and believable. Then I listened to The Irresistible Inheritance of Wilberforce by Paul Torday, who wrote Salmon Fishing in the Yemen. I actually listened to this on Audible, and I can... Dog. Sorry. I can really highly recommend the Audible book for this, because right at the beginning, there's a sound of like a cork popping out of a out of a wine bottle and the sound of like the glugging of the wine going into the into the cup and it, it was just really really creatively done and it really added such a good element to it. And this book is obviously it, the beginning of the book had the wine thing so this book is uh, about well he thinks he's a wine connoisseur maybe he is there's a very fine line between a wine connoisseur and a drunkard though and at the beginning of the book we are really, as a reader, trying to navigate our way around figuring out which one Wilberforce is. Is he a drunkard or is he actually a wine connoisseur? It does become very apparent early on that he does have a big addiction. And this book takes us on a journey of Wilberforce and how he became involved in alcoholism. Wilberforce is not a likeable character in any way. And I wouldn't say that this book was even remotely enjoyable. It's just, you know, it's a very depressing read. Apparently most of Torday's work is quite funny and full of comedy, but this was in no way fun and it is definitely not a comedy. It was very morbid, but the detail of explaining wine and the knowledge of wine was beautifully and elegantly done. So for that reason, I did award it a two star review. I read You by Caroline Kepnes. Unfortunately, I don't have my physical copy of this book with me today because I lent it to my brother because I loved it and I really highly recommend it to anyone. That's why he's got it. I'm forcing him to read it. I gave it a four star review on, on Goodreads and it's about this quirky girl who strolls into a bookstore one day and strikes up a flirtatious conversation with the guy behind the counter called Joe Goldberg. Joe is fascinated by her and so he uses the name on her credit card to look her up and f find out more about her. We follow Joe along his obsession with a girl that so readily gives her her life, every detail of it, out to the internet for everyone to see. It's a really good reminder of just how careful we need to be. Joe inevitably manages to weasel his way into her life and they start this absolutely beautiful romantic relationship that most girls would beg for from their partner, to be honest. Like, Joe is the perfect boyfriend, besides the fact that he's a complete psychopath. And uh, basically she has no idea that he's been stalking her for a while before they got together. And if there are any obstacles in their relationship, Joe will stop at nothing to make sure that they are sorted out. And it just brings a very spine-chilling truth to the saying, I'd kill for you. It's a very demented, twisted, fucked up book. All I can really say is that you're gonna leave this book feeling really unsettled. The thing that I found most unique about the book was that it's told from the point of view of a psychopath, so you're in his mind, which I found to be absolutely fascinating. As a main character, Joe makes me angry, he makes me uncomfortable, but then he'll like, he'll do or say something in his relationship that makes you think like, oh god, I wish I had someone like him, and then I have to remind myself, no, Jade, no, he's a psychopath, run away. The lead female character, Beck, is a very unlikable main character. She's slobby and sleazy and she's got major daddy issues. She actually angered me more than Joe did, which is weird to say considering that she was the victim. The writing itself I found to be a masterpiece. It was incredible, but it was also so simple, like simplicity at its best. It's just like this confusing mess that only a genius could pull off. It was very addictive, although a little bit too heavy at times. I already have the sequel, uh, Hidden Bodies, which I am very excited to be picking up shortly. 
When I listened to The Great Gatsby by F. Scott Fitzgerald on Audible, and I left the star rating out of my review on it on Goodreads because with everything in my life being so chaotic at the moment, I just was not able to really soak this book in. To be honest, I was a mess while I listened to this. I'm going to give you like the basic details about what it's about, but I feel quite bad actually giving a review on it because I need to try and read it again, maybe the physical copy this time. It just, it was a big struggle for me to pay attention during it and I think it, it could be a really brilliant book, I just, I wasn't in it. The nice thing about the audio, the, the audiobook is that it's, um, it's narrated by Jake Gyllenhaal, which added a really cool touch. What I can say, and what I did definitely pick up, was that Fitzgerald utilises the English language so beautifully. So it's summer, and the main character, Nick, decides to go and stay in West Egg, Long, Long Island, next door to this guy called Jay Gatsby. The two men bond instantly when they meet because they are, they were both war veterans. Gatsby is this really mysterious man and no one really knows who he is, or a lot of people don't anyway, although they all attend his, his very large extravagant parties. The book isn't about Nick at all, it's about Gatsby, which makes it really interesting because you're, you're getting the story from a complete outsider's perspective. He's this really genuine, gracious guy, but people just take full advantage of him. The story, from what I gather, is about his love for a woman who just isn't who she th he thinks she is. I found what I did find about this book was that it was about a bunch of pretentious Americans in the 1920s that like extravagant parties. About wealth and morals and just the lifestyle in the 20s. There's a love triangle which normally I would adore in a book, but I, I really need to reread this so yeah, let me know if you enjoyed The Great Gatsby in the comments down below, because I I want to give it another go, I do. But a lot of people have already told me that they actually really didn't enjoy it, but I think to be fair on the book and the author, I need to just try one more time. We have On the Other Side by Carrie Hope Fletcher. And I don't have this book with me anymore because I obviously, I left Mallorca in a big rush and I couldn't take all of my belongings with me. I had to choose very specific books. As you can see, all these books came with me. So my back is quite sore from carrying backpacks and suitcases jam-packed with books, but I couldn't bring them all. So I didn't enjoy On the Other Side by Carrie Hope Fletcher at all, so it wasn't a big heartbreak for me to not keep it. I gave it a one-star review and I just, I, to be honest, I hated it. It tried so hard to be diverse, it was bringing in all these elements of like pansexuality, bisexuality, homosexuality, heterosexuality. There's adultery and there's miscarriages and there's like this Romeo and Juliet type forbidden love story and it's just like, ugh. it was just really inelegantly done. It's all over the place. The target market was a huge confusion for me. The main character is 27 and 80 because she kind of, in the story, she kind of goes back and forth between being this 80 year old woman who has died and she's trying to get to heaven, but she needs to get the weight lifted off of her soul before she can enter the gates of heaven. And then it goes to where she needs to fix her life, which was at the age of 27. Even with these two ages, 27 and 80, I felt like I was reading a children's book. The metaphors throughout this book are so tiresome. Her imagination for the magical realism inserted very sporadically throughout this book is ridiculous and it's crazy. The characters all had these cartoon-like names which drove me bonkers. Like summer, winters, snow, white, pestle. Shine, Weathersby. I can go on. My dog is looking at me like I'm mad because I'm talking to my phone. It's okay, Fritz. You can stop shaking. Come here. Come see him. Oh, but you smell so bad. He smells so bad. Come here. Come say hello to the camera. Can you see him? He's my, my old boy. My old man. I love you, Fritz. Anyway, 
The main character, Evie, was so pathetic as a main character and she was weak and not a strong female character. It's beyond my comprehension how this book got published. Sorry. Yep, that is the books that I read in January. Let me know if you've read any of them down below, if I've inspired you to read one, or if I've kind of warned you to avoid a certain one. Let me know. Lovely to chat to you as always. I look forward to your comments. If you are new, please subscribe, like this video, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.